coming to another lesson. This does not have any water, so we're actually not going to take a sip out of that. That is unfortunate, but that's okay because we are here to learn. I mean, I'm going to have to talk, so I guess the dry throat is going to be a thing, but that's okay. Um, we, we've been playing Riven today. Now, the thought behind this was, okay, you know, so we've got used to bot lane so much so Twitch is our main currently. So beating our head against the bot lane wall, that seemed to be effective. We, it took, took us a while to get there, but we finally got some good ADC mechanics. We uh, climbed with Twitch back on up, so that, that felt pretty nice. So let's figure out what our next weak spot is. Our next weak spot is top. Not necessarily top in the traditional sense of what is usually top, which is like, CC tanks kind of stuff, but the like bruiser early game power spike snowball people and who is emblematic of that if not Riven, right? So we're gonna pick up Riven today. We're gonna play a lot of Riven Or well, we did pick up Riven today We did play a lot of Riven and we didn't do so great at the start We we got into a bit of a group by the end So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna review the last game we played today and we're gonna see what we could have done better So I'm not even really gonna jump into uh, the overview of what happened. Obviously, there were some better games we could have reviewed. There were some worse games we could have reviewed. But just going with the most recent, whoops, just going with the most recent one to see as we really got into our groove with Riven, what we were playing like, where we could have improved, what we could have done worse, or what we did worse than we could have, what uh, we should be focusing on. I know Riven is a pretty, even before playing today, I knew Riven was a pretty mechanically intensive champion, as much as the jokes would have you believe otherwise. Um, so I wasn't expecting to do great on her, and I was actually fairly helpful by, or fairly happy by the end of the day uh, with what we got. Hey, the Draven Jungle hanging out in the chat. Welcome, my friend. Good to have you hanging out with us. And if that doesn't entice you guys to watch the stream, I don't know what it is. We just got we've got a Draven jungle hanging out. Come on, come on. How do you guys not interested in talking to the Draven jungle? <laughs> All right, let me show you. just quickly make sure you guys can see that on screen. Perfect, beautiful. All right, great. So we're gonna hop right into the game here. How long was this game? This game. Well, this was a fairly long one, about. 30 minutes or so. So, where are we? We're right here. So, it looks like it was a pretty normal start. We actually didn't have very good uh, vision of our bot side jungle. So, I was trying to keep a patrolling look to see where anybody might have been going for an invade. Go for a little leash there. Oops, oops, oops. Hold on, hold on. Down to two now. Come on, there we go. Now, uh, we're, we're getting the choppiness, so we're actually going to have to drop the face rig program. Hold on one moment here. Let's go ahead and just close out of this. Ba boom All right, that should fix the problem. If that does indeed close it. All right, great. Oh, so much smoother. Wonderful. Uh, so this, uh, I realized very quickly after that first auto attack, he was running, uh, it doesn't actually show up here. I'm kind of surprised it doesn't show up. Um, but he's running 35% crit chance just off of runes and starting items. So as soon as I took that one crit, I was like, whoa, is that the 0.1% crit chance or is he running crit runes? And he was running crits. I was like, all right, we're not going to trade with him. <laughs> we're going to stay back. And I was a little slow to react there to the spin. Probably could have reacted a little bit quicker there. So again, here's the crit. Oh my god, alright. Well, normally that would have been okay. Like, he would have only chunked us to about here, and the call for help would have equalized that. Right here, so I, I took a few steps forward still before reacting and going this way. As soon as he spun forward, if I just reacted, I would probably be right about here, which is out of his auto attack range. Oops. Give me back my mouse. There we go. Um, and I would have both dodged the spin damage and that auto attack. So even though I'm sitting under leveled right now, which is fine. Um, to be expected when he's pushing in like that. I still could have done a little bit better. Now, seeing that the gank was coming, I actually put a second point in my W. And I experimented with this a lot today. It seemed to work out very well for the ganks. 
Couldn't actually quite get him immediately there. Took quite the long chase, and Eve wound up being the one that got it, which is actually fine, because Eve's going to be more proactive on the map than I am, especially as, like, a person trying to learn Riven today. <laughs> so I was actually happy she got that. I did need to chase with her to make sure I got that last knockup from the cube. I'm looking to just get that pushed out as much as possible before recalling, because he had just burned teleport. So great, I feel comfortable on matching. Fortunately, since he zoned me into the turret, I'm way behind on CS. I shouldn't be this behind, though, even with how far he zoned me. I'm just still getting used to farming with Riven. Which theoretically should be very easy, but it's just a new sort of farming attack pattern. So we didn't have the best back there. I think when I was walking the lane, I was pretty much just looking on the map for a TP target. Couldn't find it. So just come back to lane here, but I still have the TP up. And one of the things I need to do a little bit more is when I'm in the actual minutia of lane, when I'm looking to recall or looking to walk back to lane, I'm pretty good at checking around for TP opportunities, but when I get sucked into the micro of the lane, I miss TP opportunities, which like, maybe there was, uh, probably not actually, but didn't even realize that there was a positional disadvantage there for the Jinx when I was in-game. Okay, still no awards, so didn't really miss too much there. We're doing okay farming back up. Now, he did hit six before us. That's me again looking for the uh, TP down there. Because I do have the ward now. Yeah, you see me pinging out for it. And I'm actually committing really hard, and I wait until I see that they were committing onto us with the Leona Zenith Blade, but as soon as Galio's here and this kill goes down, it's like, alright, time to cancel that TP. There's nothing I can get done there. Unfortunately, that puts me even further behind in lane. So right now, I can still evenly trade because we're on similar items, but like, I am monstrously behind in CS, and I think I need to just focus on last hitting with Riven a little bit more in these games. Because she is so snowball oriented, if I um, let myself fall behind in items just because I'm not last hitting properly, I think I really set myself up for failure. It's not really that much major stuff going on here. And again, even after shoving it in like that, I'm still going to be about 20 CS down, assuming he's equalizing somewhere on the map. So seeing that it's still pushed in top, I look to pressure elsewhere on the map because top's just doing work on its own. Great. I actually popped the ult a little bit sooner there. And the flash wasn't as much to get the last hit. It was mostly to flash over the Jinx trap. So I'm, I'm mostly okay with how I played that, except I should have saved the second charge of my ult for the start there. And here I should have been able to go in and stun definitely the Leona, possibly the Amumu too. I just hopped back. I think I have to get more in my head the opportunity of like stunning people if they're diving. Which I think will just come in time as I play top. We had a couple of dives on us earlier today in top lane, not in this game, but in others, where we were able to stun people under turret and just knock them up and let the turret tank them, uh, take them down. So it's all right. comes in. Uh, this I'm pretty happy with, just because I'm right in the middle of everything, and my AoE is good, but at the same time, I'm right in the middle of everything, and I'm pretty squishy at this point in the game. And I had, not that, I didn't even have these items yet, I just had some uh, long sword and pots, I think. So at the end of the day, the Space Aids wind up making it a 2 for, since I had TP'd in, a 2 for, I think, 3, but... It was an, uh, a, basically an ace there for two, and we still lost the Drake anyway. So I'm glad I'm TPing, but I could probably find a little bit more opportune chances to teleport in. Get ourselves back to lane here. Unfortunately, 
You've got Silla there trying to defend the turret. That's fine, not a big deal. Mishra's trying to defend, appreciate that. We're starting to catch up a little bit in CS. Now that we have a little bit of damage under our belt with the... With the phage. Seems alright. With that TP coming out top, we're free to roam ourselves on over. And they're very deep. So just being able to get in there, try and make stuff work. I do my best to chain the CC there, and I think I do an okay job of it that time. That was something we were struggling a lot more with earlier in the day. Not sort of uh, overlapping our knockup and our stun. Poor map awareness on my part. I should have known that Leona was over there to go in on her. That's too bad. She even ends up surviving through all that. So that's real unfortunate. And this was a sad moment. Like, Bard had actually... I want to see what happened here. Like, I remember Bard had ulted. And then that's when I stopped paying attention. Because I was like, oh, well, she's clearly dead. Oh. Uh, he just didn't throw the E down. He went for a Q. Yeah, she does actually wind up making it out of here alive, which is just crazy. And then I think also Mal dies here. <laughs> That's real unfortunate, but you know, shit happens. So not so bad. Still trailing behind in CS, but we've pretty much stabilized after that early lead. Or early lead for Trenmere. Seeing a mid. I know I'm free to shove. Let's see, now they're all Mia. I should probably back away. This is probably not good enough ward coverage to be there. I don't think I got punished here. Yeah, I actually wind up not getting punished there. But, uh, yeah, they were coming for me. Just a little bit quick on the recall there. But mostly lucky. I probably should have died there. I think my map awareness fortunately got her again. I think my map awareness is just worse than usual because I'm trying to learn the champion right now, so I'm so hyper-focused on just, like, the micro. Which I think we're not doing that bad, to be honest. That was unfortunate. The flash there probably didn't do too much. Flash did about as much as that bar ultimate. Um... Honestly, I don't see anything that's, like, super bad. It's just like, okay, I should have ulted a little bit later the first time. I shouldn't be missing as many last hits. I should have better map awareness, being, uh, some, being a responsible top laner who pays attention to the minimap. I've even got the extra large minimap going on, so I should be able to make that work. here. One wing for the minions to come. I wind up not coming with them, so I just do the push moving here. They're actually still going to push in on us. So I maybe should have stayed there. Especially since I had TP. I actually, I think that was a major mistake. I think I should have been splitting this whole time and TP'd in for this. And we actually don't even wind up getting anything done. It's only the uh, flash nozzle that makes something work. I get a little bit of damage on the back end too. And we do wind up winning that fight, but... It's only because of the next wave happened to stack that this wound up pushing. Because it got slowed down so the next crash line was further out towards our side, so it stacked, but... I didn't properly set this up. I just sort of got lucky that that's how it worked out. Good TP and the assist there, but... This additional pressure on the opposite side of the map is just a happenstance. And I should have set that up a little bit better. Hmm. 
trying to create a little pressure here. Split with the Baron I can. Uh, can't quite knock this down before he gets here. He gets a lot of damage on this, so I even have to flash away here. I'm gonna get out alive though. Oh, there's something I messed up. I remember that moment. So when this happened, here, let's skip ahead here. So I go in. And I wind up not using my stun to get both of them. But since he has to go kill me, since he has to auto me to kill me, he's gonna step into auto range. So right here, I EW, right? And like this is the range of it. So he's not in the range for the stun. If I had held off until. Like right now, the second charge of my Q, and then W'd. Not only would it easily hit Trindomir here, but it would also refresh the stun that was already sort of overlapped because of the Bard stun. So maybe she would have had a little bit more free time to auto attack, but probably not enough unless she got a really hefty crit, but she doesn't have IE. So we probably would have been able to get her down ourselves and also like have a shot at least at getting away but I'm a little bit too like spam all the abilities right now in Riven. I think I need to be more judicious about like using abilities that's all mechanics really there's not one particular thing that's jumping out at me it just mostly seems like my mechanics are bad, which, like, as something new I'm starting with, I expect that to be the case. Rotate over, and I don't have the TP just yet, so... Good to rotate. That was probably a poor choice. I probably should have just backed away once it was already, yeah. Well, me and Eve did the same kind of thing there. It was like, alright, we're kind of outnumbered, but I think I can do this, and then you just couldn't. <laughs> so, bad play on my part. I actually TP bot to create the pressure here, since we knocked out three of them, thanks to Zai, who's doing the carry work, putting on the carry pants. I like that I backed away there as much as possible, and then turned on the Jinx here. That felt really nice. Looked like it was pretty effective, too. And we wind up killing the Galio at the end of it. Yeah, it seemed good. Good target prioritization there. I can start taking jungle camps like that fairly early on. So I should probably farm the jungle a bit more. It's not as good up here. His Gronk is a little bit more damage to me than I'm comfortable with. Because he doesn't take as much from my AoE, who's only one guy in the whole camp, but... Krogs I could take pretty easily, I would think. And I just keep holding, so hopefully they can make it work bottom, and we'll lose our base in the meantime. Did lose the inner turret down there, but again, I'm holding off the inhibitor. Or the nexus turrets, rather. And then the engagement's done, so I just keep pushing it out as much as I can. I really don't think I was autopiloting down mid. I think I was keeping a very close eye on what was happening there. But maybe I could have rotated down a little bit more readily. I was also thinking we could get the... Baron. Nice. And see, that was good patience. I hit the stun, and then I hit the knockup. And that way she used QSS and still had CC on her. Went a little harder here. It's 
team will work out though. I think Riven just goes hard and is okay though. So I shouldn't be afraid to like go for it with a Riven. Yeah, I think I shouldn't be afraid to go for it with Riven, but it's just I need to just be a little bit better at all of my mechanics and not just like, oh, like I should, you know, hit my combo better or last hit better. Like also I need to just have better map awareness, which is something that's been a constant struggle for us, but certainly has reared its head again in this game. So just general game mechanics, not necessarily champion specific. Trying to get to Trainer here. He wind up seeing him up. Alright, another GA pops. So especially once I have GA like that, I shouldn't be afraid to keep rolling. I probably should have split on the other side of the Nexus a little bit quicker, because Amumu is the main AoE like that, so. Well, it wound up working out. I I didn't see any major glaring errors that game. I think it was just, like, general mechanical proficiency. And if you're in that situation, what do you do but just play more Riven, you know? So, I think we're doing the right thing. I think we... And today showed it. I mean, again, looking at the progress, we started off today with... First game on Riven was we went 5, 12, and 3 to 3, 12, and 3. So that's pretty rough. And the last two was like, okay, not necessarily the best score lines, but hey, we were winning. And this one was a pretty good score line. So, you know, it's okay. We started to get in a bit of a groove by the end of the day. And, you know, that's good. Um, one of the things that I should probably do after today and like getting sinking my teeth in for for the rest of the night just put on in the background is put on some box box videos because box box for anybody who doesn't know is a uh, streamer who just plays ribbon he's a ribbon main he just goes ham um and getting getting sinking my teeth into the champion today really familiarizes myself with the mechanics i was very aware of the passive of managing that trying to keep that up um trying to make sure i don't overlap my own cc stuff like that and seeing how he plays, seeing what he builds a little differently, but also seeing his mechanical play would probably help me out quite a bit. So, or at least I would be able to draw from it more now than I would yesterday. So, uh, we'll probably probably do some of that and see if we can incorporate some of that into our uh, build, but or our, our own play style rather. But uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. Uh, I think when you're fresh to a champion, we also picked up Corky for the first time today. Riven we'd actually played before, it's just been forever and I was never good at her. <laughs> uh, Corky was actually first time today and by the end of the day, I mean, we didn't actually take even that many games on Corky and we found ourselves a nice little groove on Corky where we started feeling okay with him. Um, so, you know, it's uh, not bad. Uh, a day of just relaxing, doing some norms. Picking up some new champions, trying to work on some old champions that we never quite got down. Uh, feels good, and uh, there's there's no real better substitute, I don't think, than just like playing the champions and trying to grind it up and, and get that proficiency more innate in yourself. So I think we did okay today. Just generally keep playing, and I think we'll continue to improve. So no major core to this lesson, but uh, I hope nonetheless it was helpful to you guys to at least see the mindset to come into um, with a, a champion you're not proficient at or uh, have are playing for the first time or have never really gotten a hold of. Uh, hopefully just being able to approach it with that, okay, yeah, we're going to suffer a little bit here as we go through the learning curve, but, uh, you know, we're going to get ourselves into a groove and we're going to make it work by the end of the day, and lo and behold, we do, so... Hopefully it works out like that for you guys. Hopefully you're a little inspired to take out that champion out of the champion pool that you never really mastered or pick up a brand new one. 
And uh, let me know how it goes. Hopefully it works out for you guys. And uh, hopefully the lesson was helpful. If it was, if you know somebody who's a bit of a one trick and you want them to start picking up some new champions, maybe this will inspire them to pick up something new, seeing that, you know, willing to bang my head against the wall, maybe they're willing to join me in that camaraderie. <laughs> um, so, you know, feel free to share this with them if you think uh, it would be helpful to them. If it was helpful to you, great. I, I uh, hope you stay tuned and find some more use out of the additional lessons. See you guys next episode.